Hey everybody, so to tonight, while I have some spare time, I'm going to go through the steps to installing ZFS on CentOS. Uh, basically the story behind this is that my new job, I wanted a archive of files while we're in transition between one server and another and had a bunch of spare hard drives laying around that I wanted to turn into a quick makeshift archive server and that's what I did and this is the process that I went through uh, the only thing missing here is the encryption side of things and I'm going to create another video for that but for now I'll just show you how to create a ZFS uh, array RAID array basically uh, right here. So let's go ahead and get, get started. Um, first thing we need to do is need to install the uh, Apple release, which I already did, and that's going to be uh, simple, you know, yum dash y for yes, install Apple dash release. Uh, you can do that. Very simple. You want to make sure you're fully updated and reboot the server at least once. Now I do recommend using a dedicated machine for this purpose as any updates that you run uh, that have to do with kernel or kernel modules, uh, basically reloading of the kernel or changes to it, will re require the ZFS modules to be reloaded as well. And that can be very annoying. So I'll go through and touch base on that uh, as well. First, let's clear that out. So, first, we're going to start with the packages that we need, which can be the kernel developer modules. So, we'll go ahead and get that installed. Okay, now that that is finished, we can go ahead and install the um, actual ZFS. Um, <laughs> sorry about this. Uh, there we go. The, um, what is it called? Repo! The ZFS repo, basically. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And there we go. We have the repo installed. And the next part, we'll install the SPL pieces that we need. Okay, now that that's taken care of, we can go ahead and start installing the actual uh, ZFS modules. And this will actually take a while as long as everything was done correctly. Uh, after it finishes downloading, it actually has to compile it into the kernel. And uh, that can take a while. So we will. All right, and now that that's installed, we can go ahead and install uh, ZFS. So yum install ZFS. Okay, and then we can go ahead and mod probe oops, ZFS. Alright. Now, if everything worked the way I expected to, we got zpool, uh, status, no pools available. Okay, so now we can start building our makeshift array. Uh, in my case, I had a bunch of USB drives laying around that I've used. That the performance isn't great with that, but for just some spare storage with an old laptop I had laying around, it works perfectly well. And you can apply the same pr uh, concepts to any other medium you have. So let's see here, what do I have now? Okay, SDA is my main drive. So should be let's see here. I want one. Um, SD. Oh yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so SDA is the drive I'm using for my boot drive. So B, C, and D are the ones I'm going to be placing into the array. 
Um, my plan here is to have one drive for parity. So we're going to do Z pool create, uh, we're going to call it, uh, I don't know, USB block. I don't know why I would just call it that. And then it'll be a raid, oops, I cannot type right now, raid Z1. The one at the end denotes one of the drives will be used for parity. So I should, I believe I just do SDB, SDC, and SDD. Let's see if that works. Awesome. So yes, we're going to do go back, dash F to force it. Awesome. So now if I do Z pool and status, beautiful. And by default, that will put a mount point in my root. So let's do this. And you can see it as USB block right here. So there it is, and SDF-H, USB block, and 9.6 gigs. Now each of those drives I set up as five gigs. So it's three five gigabyte drives in this virtual environment, and one of them is used for parity essentially, uh, or one is lost for parity, leaving me with 10 gigs of usable storage. Now because this is a, um, archive drive. So if I do ZFS list. Alright, so this is archive drive. So I want to go ahead and add some compression to this. So ZFS, uh, what was that? Set compression equals LZ4 and that will be for USB block. All right, so now there will be compression applied. So anything that can be compressed using LZ4, it will be. So it can save us a little bit of space. The other thing I want to do is go back to my Z pool, and I want to auto replace equals on USB block. All right, and the auto replace is going to be helpful for when we add a fourth drive in as a spare. And so obviously if one of the drives fails, then the other one will pick up and go along with it. And that's basically all there really is. There isn't a whole lot more I wanted to go over tonight. I just wanted to show that we do indeed have uh, ZFS. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Uh, the other part of this was using a dedicated system. So I'm using an old laptop I have sitting on a desk and the reason for that is whenever you update the kernel you burn into problems where if you reboot the computer afterwards your ZFS uh, drives will be, well, your ZFS configuration will be lost until you reinstall the DKMS into the kernel and remount the drives, which is really easy to do. It's not a hard thing to do, but it's something to keep in mind. So what I like to do to, to hedge that off is install uh, yum cron and tell it to only install uh, security updates. So now if I do nano, she, oh, I don't have nanos, Dubai is fine. Slash Etsy uh, yum I remember here, yum, yumcron.conf. And I'll go down here oops, to update command. And we're going to take out that, place in security. And the other part of this, uh, let's see here, apply updates. Yes. And write that out and it will be let's see here system CTL enable yum cron and start and that again just about covers everything I wanted to go over tonight
next time I will look into adding encryption. I've already done that. I just need to verify a few steps and then I will come back and add that part to the video.